I'm Abigail Stewart, and today I'm going to read to you from my debut novel, The Drowned Woman. Go west, they told her, as though heeding the call of those primitive ancestors who came before would solve all of her problems. Go west to the expansive desert, the Sierras. Go west until you reach the ocean, where, eventually, you must stop and stare out at eternity for however long you choose. She held West in her heart and it was enough for a while or until it wasn't. Jeanette had her pick of master's programs having attained a modest amount of renown when her essay on Louise Bourgeois was published in a collegiate art journal. Eyes represent the totality of the male gaze. Even a woman's own eyes are simply crudely formed breasts, sexual entities and judged accordingly both breasts and eyes. In a surrealist act of dual symbolism, Bourgeois confronts the viewer with literal perception juxtaposed with a woman's sexuality. Jeanette did not feel particularly passionate about art history, but it was something to do after the end of undergrad. She'd written the entire article in brief caffeine-addled hazes, unsure if any of it made sense. However, the essay turned out to be the most important thing she'd done yet because it provided a clear path, an escape hatch, a plan. Jeanette decided to sort her options and send herself somewhere warm, somewhere out west. Sunlight was all she would remember stepping off the plane. It reflected prismatic shapes on the airport terminal's fading gray walls, and she wanted to dip her hands in it, cupping them and filling them with light. She brought only one carry-on in a backpack. Her earthly possessions consisted of sporadic thoughts and images stored on her laptop, nothing tangible. No one saw her off or welcomed her to her new home. She took a cab to her university's on-campus housing office and opened an entirely new chapter. It would strike her later how easy this had been, this starting over, this papering over her past life with streaks of sun. Her new apartment was the first place in which she'd ever lived alone without parents or roommates. It was one giant square room with a small bathroom and kitchenette attached, funded by her partial scholarship. A room of one's own, Jeanette thought. Immediately, she began to unpack. Piles of clothes covered the scuffed caramel linoleum floor, a cheap facsimile of wood. Without any furniture, the entire place was an open second floor cavern with views of the parking lot. The nearby corner store stank of stale half-smoked cigarettes. A sign advertised, keys cut quick. Though one of the lights had burned out and it appeared to just say keys cut, which was substantially more sinister. An old Indian man bent his head crookedly toward the TV, which was playing a sports show. He moved only to acknowledge Jeanette's appearance. She meandered slowly through the aisles filled with tinned meat, bottles of warm soda, cans of beans, candy, chips, and sundry cleaning items. At the end were several shelves of wine. Jeanette observed each of them in turn, running her long fingers across each of the labels decorated with cheap fonts. Finally, choosing something dry, sparkling, and under $10. She loaded her arms with toilet paper, chips, and precariously balanced the wine between them like a caress. The man made no effort at conversation, though his mouth moved silently as he tallied up the total bill, sucking in his lip when he proffered a card rather than cash, then begrudgingly providing her with a brown paper bag. Thank you, she trilled on her way out. He waved, his back already turning away, facing a screen infinitely more interesting than her. The empty room echoed with the sounds of passing traffic, the low ceiling lending a claustrophobic feel in the dark. Outside the back window, she could view the kidney-shaped pool cut crudely into a concrete slab. It will be warm here all year, Jeanette reminded herself as she opened the wine. An absence of kitchenware meant she slugged the wine straight from the bottle, the sparkling foam expanding in her mouth, threatening to overflow. It tickled, and she laughed. 
Digging around in her carry-on, she found her old black bikini and threw it on over her sweatpants. She twirled and drank and threw her head back and laughed until the entire room spun with her. The evening was punctuated by the smell of chlorine, the sound of summer, as she jumped gracelessly into the pool, the sun setting behind her. Thank you.